when we come together, God himself is witnessing that. There's nothing that we want to do that we cannot do. You see, when the church comes together, we can create millionaires among ourselves. Yes. By our ways. By our ways. <clears throat> because the point is, some of us, we are sitting here, God in heaven, God is calling us millionaires. But meanwhile, we don't have to ask. You, you get my point? Hannah was calling a barren woman here on earth, but heaven didn't know Hannah with that name. Because they knew that, no, in her womb, there are children, even prophets, yeah. there. So when earth was calling Hannah that name, heaven was laughing at them. You don't know what you are saying. Until one day, Hannah said, no, this is not my destiny. Today it has to be changed. Why yes. was that? He, she prayed, yes. and that very day, before she left the house of God, she was pregnant. It is my prayer that today somebody is going to pray Amen. that what is not there shall come to pass today. Amen. Because that's what God has made you. Everything of the Old Testament is a picture for you and I to just take look at them. Now, when the New Testament, something is bothering our mind, we will refer to the Old Testament. And no way God has put in you. So you, as a part of the church, then know that there is a power in you to change destiny. You see, if I am ambassador to a country, if I'm going back to my country, I don't need a visa. I don't need a visa. Because there is where I belong to. So you see, the main purpose of the church is that when we get up, we charge ourselves and we go out to give people a visa to go to heaven. That's the purpose of the church. That's how God made the church. So when Christ came, even the thief on the cross, immediately the thief repented. He said, Today you'll be with me in paradise. A visa, free visa, you are going to paradise. Oh, I hope that today you and I will learn that God has not called us to be just ordinary people. Amen. But He has called us and empowered us. to take control over this earth. To take control over this earth. Because you and I, we don't know our position in the kingdom. That's the reason why the devil, you know, is manipulating our life. But I'm here to encourage you that arise. For your light is about to shine. Yeah. That was the message I gave you in the beginning of the year. That arise. Beloved, sitting here, if you sit down and waiting for God to speak, He had already spoken. Yes. Read your Bible. Everything that He wants to say about you is already written there. And if you don't know those things, then the devil write, will write his own and put it as an attack on you. And when you are out there, instead of you to see Christ, you see the problems. You see what the devil has done to your life. So without God, the stem is nothing. And you see that the big is also attaching to the church. But when I put the key in its holder, you see, God and the church is not the one that is open, but rather me as an individual. So when 
I had that revelation, the bit, I gave it a different name. The name I gave to the bit is that what I can do. What I can do. If Christ is with me and the church is backing me in prayers, then it means that what God is saying with them and me, according to Matthew 18, 20, when two or three are gathered in my name, anything that they will ask, they will receive. So the church is helping me in prayers. And God is also with me. Then every door that is closed, through the church, I can open. Amen. I can open. Because of what I have. So you sitting there, you are not alone. You are not alone. If we are one family, know that whatever you are doing, the church is with you. God is with you. But because we are not part of the church, it has become individual affairs. Paul said, you should learn to bear one another's burden. But let me ask you, be honest with yourself, how many of you is praying for maybe a friend or a brother, she or he knows that in the church is suffering? <coughs> be honest with yourself. Maybe zero. <laughs> Nobody is doing it. According to 1 Samuel 15, 23, someone said, God forbid that I will sin. The sin that he will say that he will not pray for the Israelites. Only, only that alone was a sin. You not praying for your brother is a sin. According to the word of God, please give me that verse. Some, it seems some, some are doubting about what I'm saying. First Samuel 15, 23. Praise God. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 15, verses 23. I'm reading from the New King James. Verse 23. Yeah. First Samuel chapter 12, verses 23. Amen. Amen. First Samuel. It says, Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right. Amen. Amen. You need to pray for your brother. You need to pray for your sister. Because that's the reason why God has called you to be part of the church. Go with me. Isaiah 59. Quickly, because I want to bring the first, it's the second part there. We can bring it. Isaiah 59, verse 16. Isaiah 59, verse 16. Yeah, yeah, if one day you read it, no problem. Isaiah chapter And somebody also should open Ezekiel 22, verse 13. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 16. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. He saw that there was what? No man. no man or no woman. Today, the women also you are called. So put your name there. Formerly, it was the men, 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 men. But today, you also, the Holy Spirit has come. So you are part of it. You begin to change where the men are and put your name, women and women there. I saw that there was no intercessor in the church. Somebody that if I want to do something, I can communicate with him or her. That is what I want to do on earth. So go and tell the church. No, if you want to be a prophet in the church, you are afraid because they will quickly tell you that you are a witch. <laughs> but here is the word of God saying that I saw that there was no intercessor. That if I want to do something, we can communicate. Finish it for me. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him. Therefore, 
He has to do everything on his own. Listen, the key that he showed to me, there was why he was speaking to me that without him, man can do nothing. And without God also, God will not do anything. Without God, man can do nothing. And without man also, God can do nothing. So he saw that if he can find somebody within the church who is interceding for the church, that when he wants to communicate to the church, he can go to that person and communicate to his people. But there was no one. And his own righteousness is sustained in the book in Ezekiel 22 30. Praise God. Ezekiel 22, verses 30, the New King James Version says. So I sought for a man among them who will make the war and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land, that I should not destroy it. You see, I was looking for somebody to stand in between that whenever I want to go and destroy, that person can convince me and say, no, don't go and do that. Moses, when God wanted to destroy Moses was interceding. So God communicated. Moses allowed me. You see, God needed permission from Moses before he would destroy him. God wants to find somebody among us that he will need his permission before he can do what he wants to do. But there was no one. And I wonder why. I don't blame. Don't they know the secret in the kingdom that I just need an intercessor to do everything, everything through this intercessor? You see, when I came in, you were praying, but some as if they are not part of the church. Why others have gathered here praying? Some also as if they are not part of the church. You see, you want to move forward, but the eye can't want to bring you down. Mm. But the point is, I can will not go free. Mm. He will not go free. So please, if you are part of the church, let God know that you are part of the church. Amen. 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 If you are not part of the archons, let the archons separate themselves from you also. Amen. Sometimes when you are serious, it's whereby the archons want to communicate with you. It's my prayer that today you will know that there is great potential in you that you can turn things around. Because there are people backing you. If you stand alone, if the beat is breaking from the rest, the church and God, it alone can do nothing. If you want to stand alone, you can do nothing. I always say to pastor that I believe in a teamwork because it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. Christ, when he came on this earth, he could do everything on his own without the help of the disciples. But still, because it's a spiritual principle, he must Use them. Amen. They must accompany you. Amen. Amen. After Christ left, the Bible said, and God did many signs and wonders through the disciples. I'm going to ask 14 today. God wants to do miracles through your hands. But it seems you are sleeping. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. There's something in you God is waiting. According to Romans 8, 18, it says, the word is eager, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, we want to take away, you see, pastors who doesn't know their Bible will stand and criticize signs and wonders. Even Christ himself, he started his ministry with signs and wonders. 
A million signs and wonders leave the church. The church is doomed. So pastors who doesn't know their Bible, they will stand and criticize signs and wonders in the church. Don't you know that if signs and wonders is not working in the church, the unbelievers feel uncomfortable to them. Yes. Because already you, you have your problem. And we have our problem there also. You, you want us to come in so that you can add your problems to us, then we will not come. So in the wisdom of God, he started a ministry with signs and wonders. He said, by this, they will believe. Yes. They will believe that yeah. you are serving a living God. Amen. Amen. It is my prayer that today you know where you are standing in the kingdom. Amen. And begin to wrap miracles and signs. That people will see that, yes, you are serving a living God. Amen. Let me hear the first part here. The second part, let's go to Mark Mark 16, we are reading from 15 to 18, quickly, because of your time. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 18. And he said to them, Go into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Most probably here. Who is not baptized here? If you are not baptized, please can I see your hand? Oh no, it's not shame. You are not baptized. 